Well, welcome, uh, and thank you for joining this webinar uh, on a new tool for collecting and reporting data on energy efficiency programs. My name is Ian Hoffman. I'm with the Electric Electricity Markets and Policy Group here at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and I'll introduce our, our speakers momentarily. But first, a few words of housekeeping. All of your phones uh, are muted for the duration of the webinar. Your, uh, your questions are most welcome if you could place them in the chat box. We'll be collecting those questions, and I'll tee them up for our speakers uh, in a uh, vigorous kind of Q&A session at the end. And with that, let me again welcome you to, the, to this joint webinar hosted by the American Public Power Association and Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. We have a project here that collects and analyzes the cost performance of energy efficiency programs that are funded by customers of investor-owned utilities. APPA staff uh, saw some of our reports and suggested that public power entities might also benefit from being able to see what, for example, appliance rebate programs cost from one end of the country to the other or among similar-sized utilities. That vision of giving public power more insight into uh, its programs and how they compare comes from Alex Hoffman, the first of our speakers today. Alex uh, works at the Public Power uh, American and Public Power Association as the Director of Energy and Environmental Services, and he spent uh, more than a decade working in the electric industry and the last six years serving public power uh, utilities. He works on distribution system reliability, on safety, energy efficiency, and benchmarking related issues. Your second speaker, Greg Ribka, is a researcher here at the Electricity Markets and Policy Group at Berkeley Lab. He analyzes emerging issues in demand response, energy efficiency, and distributed energy resources, including the cost performance of efficiency programs and quantitative analysis of regulated electric utility business models. Before joining LBL, Greg worked seven years at Nexent on a range of demand-side management issues for a variety of utilities, ESCOs, and multinational organizations. He has uh, two bachelor's degrees uh, from Penn State University, one in mechanical engineering and another in science and technology policy. Our third speaker, David Shepard Gow, Gaw, uh, is uh, energy efficiency manager at Cowlitz uh, PUD, and uh, since uh, late 2014, he oversees a full portfolio of commercial, industrial, and residential programs, which have saved uh, 35 average megawatts over the past four years. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the Northwest, that translates into about uh, 306 gigawatt hours. Uh, and uh, he's formerly with Washington State University's energy program for, uh, for 20 years, uh, supporting uh, DOE initiatives, WAPA, uh, the uh, Northeast Energy Efficiency uh, Alliance, and uh, BPA in utility and customer energy efficiency services. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alex. Thanks. So, you know, I want to thank everyone again for attending. And just really quick, for those of you who don't know who we are, the American Public Power Association is the national service organization for the more than 2,000 not-for-profit community-owned electric utilities in the U.S. Uh, we were created in 1940 as a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and our job really here is to assist our members in their efforts to provide cost-effective, reliable electric service including environmental stewardship. So with that said, uh, we do our best to support public power efforts in energy efficiency, which is important to many utilities, and why we have been working with LBNL. Uh, because the public power community-owned model can have different motivations for energy efficiency projects, including things like highly diverse community value requirements for consideration, among other things. Uh, there really is this need for better benchmarking information. And, and on top of that, there are a lot of discussions that need to be had. And really, from our point of view, that's what this project is all about. Um, public power, you can see on this map here in total, is all across the country. Um, and they're owned by counties, utility districts, and sometimes even states. Uh, collectively, the public power utilities deliver it electricity to one of every seven customers in the U.S., and they include some of the nation's largest cities. You may have heard of, for example, Los Angeles, California, San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Jacksonville, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Memphis, Tennessee. However, I think it's important that people recognize that the median size of a public power utility is 2,000 customers or less. You know, that, that means that there's a 1,000 
municipal utilities out there with less than 2,000 customers. And, and this is a real challenge. So ideally, we see this benchmarking tool and these efforts that we'll talk about here today as a way to further foster the public power energy efficiency community. Uh, we really want to help the smallest utilities access meaningful, useful, and relevant benchmarking information. And ultimately, we'd like to be, you know, big pie in the sky vision, supporting our utilities in taking energy efficiency data from their programs, crunching it, and using it to help further research. Uh, this is really the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of fundamental questions about energy efficiency that still could still be answered to help inform good public policy making and discourse, and a lot of groups doing good work on the topic. Um, we're here as an effort to support the public power community in rigorously analyzing, selecting, and benchmarking their energy efficiency programs. That requires good research and information, and so you know, we really want to thank LBNL and the other member utilities who have been working in this space with us. If you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, just a quick overview before we get on to the real meat of this presentation. The DSM Benchmarker uh, is a project that was put together by some of our largest public power utilities. It's currently being updated, but it's a really neat tool with a lot of potential. Uh, we hope to be rolling that back out pretty soon here, and we think that this project, again, gives us additional information to help utilities slice and dice their information quickly and easily with. Uh, we have an R&D program called DEED, and for those of you that are on the phone that might be a part of APPA member utilities and also be a part of the DEED program, that's a good place for grant funding for energy efficiency research by member utilities. You can go there and apply for grants. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to follow up with We also provide an energy efficiency resource center, and this is just composed mostly of benchmarking and case studies, and we'll be producing a demand-side management survey later this year. And I think that's it for me, so thanks. And moving on here. Great. Thanks a lot, Alex. Um, and before I go into the specifics of the tool, I'm going to address some of the background of energy efficiency reporting and the current state of it, as well as some of the benefits. Um, so energy efficiency reporting is becoming increasingly important. Um, IOU customer-funded programs spent $7 billion in 2013 alone. And the spending levels can, are continuing to rise as there's a much greater reliance on energy efficiency today and that's expected to continue on into the future. And what this means is that there's a need for utility overseers to have good insight into how those funds are being spent. So what we're addressing here is a way that utilities can communicate what they're doing in energy efficiency, both to internal as well as to external stakeholders. And currently, Energy efficiency reports typically include both a narrative providing a description of the programs as well as tables and charts with some spending and savings data. And it's this latter piece that we're going to be focused on here. In our research, we found a wide variety of practices which, practices, which create the challenges when comparing the results from utilities across states or even within a state. And many, st many studies have found issues of inconsistency or a lack of rigor and incompleteness. And this makes it challenging to always know whether a utility achieved its goals. So turning to the, some of the specifics, and just as a note, the data on this slide here relates to IOU reporting and not to public power utility reporting. So for that subset of utilities, we see more than half of the states not reporting total costs and less than half the states reporting program cost breakdown, the program cost breakdowns. And even then when they do, the cost categories often differ between utilities. And in terms of the energy savings, only a third of the states report lifetime savings. So, and that means that you can't necessarily tell how long the program savings last. And then there's inconsistent definitions for things like net savings or what the baselines that's used. And both, and both of those things are really key values for being able to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between values. So not knowing these definitions can ultimately undermine confidence in savings claims. But it's not just the spending and savings definitions that are different. It's even how the programs themselves are being categorized. And there's no consensus on how to best categorize programs. And LBNL has created a standardized program typology 
Um, others have created their own scheme as well. Um, Berkeley Lab created, developed this by reviewing many programs nationwide to get a feel for the patterns going on across the country. And then our typology was settled on because we found that it serves a nationally representative set of programs. So all of these factors that I've mentioned, the cost categorization, program categorization, diff uh, definitional differences, et cetera, make it challenging to assess how a unit of energy savings compares between states and utilities. So this is exactly where this project here comes in. So the objectives of this project are to encourage more transparency, consistency, and rigor in energy efficiency reporting, specifically as it relates to the impacts, costs, and participation employed. The primary audience of this are utilities that don't currently provide annual reports and the utilities that are new to energy, energy efficiency programming or the ones that are ramping up their EE programs. So additionally, our aim is to better is to encourage broader, more comprehensive data going to the states. So you now I've kind of laid out, kind of um, talked a lot about energy efficiency reporting and the needs of it, but kind of, well, why do we even need this data? And then, well, the answer is kind of obvious that there's many uses of it, but it really just depends on which stakeholder you ask. So for example, utilities may want to benchmark similar markets or identify opportunities for improvement. Utility overseers may look to compare cost and performance among energy efficiency resources. Also, there's the interest in just ensuring prudent spending of ratepayer dollars. System operators may leverage the data to improve load forecasting, and energy efficiency industry actors may be looking to ascertain market dynamics and trends. So there really isn't just like a single use of this data. Instead, there's many of the uses of it, and it just depends on which stakeholder you're asking. So ultimately, the aim is to take this data and develop insights by answering various questions. And some of those may be about the resource performance, addressing questions such as what resources were acquired, what were the targets achieved by the utility, how much did they cost, how long will the savings last. Uh, one, one may want to take a look at the utility performance by asking, how is the utility performing compared to its peers? Or, um, and also look when, when thinking about kind of just equity issues, you can look at how broad the participation was in a given portfolio in terms of the number of participants. Um, so this is where you're able to demonstrate the worthiness of your programs. So to kind of now just turning to the, to the tool itself, um, in order for all the stakeholders to see the potential value from the data, they need to have access to it. So we have developed the spreadsheet-based tool that enables utilities to report data to their overseeing agencies, and we see lots of benefits here that include more efficient and effective use of utility staff time, and better opportunities for benchmarking over time and across different geographic regions. And the design was intended to be simple and straightforward for inputting data. This consistent format provides for ease of input and interpretation. The tool provides an opportunity to report a core set of data and in a format that can be quickly and easily interpreted. And we fully recognize, um, so while we recognize this is a really simple tool, we certainly fully recognize that a number of public power utilities have sophisticated DE reporting and that goes uh, beyond this tool or well beyond this tool. Um, and we don't envision this tool replacing those more advanced reporting practices, but rather we ultimately see this tool as raising the bar for smaller utilities and ones that are either new to EE or really ramping up their efforts. So. Uh, based on our research, we found some data inputs are common across all utilities, such as just you know, program categories or descriptions of the program, claim savings, expenditures, things like that. And then here, look, this is the first sheet of the tool where there's a place to enter the utility name, uh, just contact information, uh, discount rate, and the discount rate, that's just essentially asking about the cost of capital. Um, so that might be like a municipal bond rate, something like that. Um, also asks about the uh, line losses, and that's just asking about uh, trying to ascertain what the what the generator savings may, level uh, may be. So if one of your objectives is 
emissions reductions, and this allows you to go to take the meter level savings and determine what that savings was at the bus bar. And you'll notice here that there are navigation buttons on the top of the screen, and those are um, those those or similar navigation buttons are found on all the sheets, and that's just of course to help you navigate throughout the throughout the whole workbook. Um, then you also note that there's a glossary button, and just really just given that there's terminology differences found across regions, states, um, or even utilities, we find it really helpful to have to offer some sort of clarity in terms of the specific terms that we're using within the sheet. And then when you click on that, you're able to see the different definitions that are used within the tool. So it's just kind of quick and easy access. And then and it comes in really just two different formats. One where you can quickly reference it through the link, um, or alternatively, it's embedded as a Word document, and that that's handy just so uh, when you're progressing through the spreadsheet, you can easily refer to the definitions in a just a different file without having to go back and forth between the um, between different worksheets. Um, you can also include notes um, in the tool, and those, that can also just be accessed from the utility information sheet. Um, and that's just a place for, if you're wanting to kind of just communicate internally or externally, the information that's not captured within the program data sheet, or if there's specific kind of irregularities with with the portfolio reporting for a given year, that sort of thing. Um, and the program data um, is a, it's a single sheet where most of the data is collected, and it's accessed using um, this button in the upper left-hand corner. The, and then that data just includes just general program information, program type, savings, cost, participation. Um, and I'll now walk through that sheet using uh, a few sc different screenshots, but just know that um, each of those tables are actually right next to each other on the same sheet, so I'm just presenting them in this manner, so it's just a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, and looking at the program data sheet now, uh, on the far left, uh, there's of, of that uh, larger, again, this kind of just extends over to the right, but so the far, this is just looking at the left-hand portion of it. Um, there's fields for the name of the program, the fuel type, program year, whether or not it's a resource program, and the uh, program categorization, so what the sector that it's in the, and the, the type of the program. And then if you just shift over to the right a little bit, then you'll see there's um, program category information, or just to the right of the program category information is information on the uh, average measure life for, for a given program, the claimed lifetime savings, claimed annual savings, and then and this can be reported for both uh, megawatt hours and therms. And then continuing to move on to the right, it's this is where the this is the expenditure information can be included, and this can be broken down into the different specific cost categories that are listed here. And now shifting all the way over to the right, you can um, see the data for program participation and on the number of units are installed. And this, this is where that can be included. So that's all there is in this program data sheet. And you can see that it's ultimately pretty simple and pretty straightforward and easy to both input and um, interpret that information. So with that, I'll hand it over to David. Thanks, Alex, and thanks, Ian, as well. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start off. We're um, a Northwest utility in Washington State, a mid-size public utility district, and um, we have the the fortune, if you will, to uh, be part of the Northwest and that infrastructure. Um, in the Northwest, we have the Northwest Power Act that somewhat that drives what we do as far as efficiency as a resource. The Northwest Power and Conservation and Planning Council sets regional targets, um, and as of late, we have the seventh power plan, which is a regional effort um, that drives uh, efficiency targets regionally. Um, Bonneville Power Administration uh, helps utilities um, with the framework in implementing and reporting at a regional level. And we also have other uh, market actors such as the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance, 
which is a market transformation entity. And they help with a lot of our upstream and midstream efforts to change the market and get more efficiency adopted within the region. Additionally, as a, a, a Washington State uh, a public utility, um, we have the Energy Independence Act, and that's another kind of a regulatory reporting uh, requirement that we have, or also known as I-937. Um, and with that, uh, we're required to develop a conservation potential assessment, which is a planning tool and guide for us to get to a specific target every two years. With that, um, this big picture that we have in the Northwest, it creates a lot of consistency and, and standardization. Um, for all of the energy efficiency work that we do. And that's the biggest value. I see a lot of what we do in the region and what LBNL uh, is doing with APPA in terms of sharing this type of information. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, you know, it, for me, it was really easy to transition into this role because of this reason. In the region, we have really consistent reporting. We have a process that we follow. All of the information is the same for all of the utilities that report uh, and submit um, their information to Bonneville Power Administration. Um, this helps guide us regionally um, and gives us a real strong understanding because of the consistency. It, it tells us where we've been, where we're going, and you know what is out there in the future in terms of programs. It's uh, it helps give us the opportunity to develop cost-effective programs, um, as well as getting rid of programs that have reached saturation or market transformation, as we call it. Um, some additional benefits that we have regionally with the framework and infrastructure that we have, and I, I see this moving to the national piece, is it allows us to collaborate with others in the region to share our experiences and learn from one another. Next slide. So nationally, um, I, I see there being a lot of, um, a lot of benefits. Um, this gives us the big picture. This gives us all the data nationally that will tell us what is happening uh, from the energy efficiency or DSM perspective, um, as well as why. Um, it gives us, this tool could give us an opportunity to uh, make better decisions and uh, for research, uh, developing new technologies, and leveraging uh, tax dollars as well. Uh, the, the other piece of this is that I see that, you know, there are um, opportunities where programs um, can really benefit from one another, from state to state, even from region to region. And that's a very, uh, uh, this effort could give us a more comprehensive picture uh, for that process. And then obviously, uh, um, in terms of uh, alignment nationally, um, it could be political, but uh, on the policy and regulatory side would give us some uh, consistency. Uh, next slide. So, so some of the challenges, uh, um, as well as the solutions I've kind of called out, um, just the, the, the availability or capacity of staff. Um, if, you don't, um, if you don't have staff or capacity, this could be a challenge for you. Um, so it would be a matter of kind of leveraging opportunities with staff and capacity, as well as other requirements that you may have as a utility. Um, another challenge and related solutions, just internal infrastructure. Um, what do you have? What do you have? How are you tracking your efficiency efforts to date? Um, for us uh, at Calitz PUD, we're just in the process of um, building a database to manage all of this. Um, uh, we're, <clears throat> we're using uh, um, uh, the Yenter Group solution, and that will enable us to actually have reporting that's simpler. So we'll be able to actually uh, make this process and our support for this process um, a lot easier. It'll just be able to spit out reports uh, as long as we map um, all of the 
content appropriately to the tool. Um, and then kind of the, the last thing is that agreement. Um, everybody kind of needs to agree and get on board with this effort. Um, they've done a really good job with the glossary. I've looked through that. And if you agree to some of the key elements on that, it's going to make it a lot easier um, for what we're after. This is a, a really, uh, this is kind of an exciting oppor uh, opportunity, I think, for me, or for my perspective, that, uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, um, will enable us as public utilities and all of those that participate, the labs, uh, uh, APPA, um, will get us to a point of, um, quicker energy efficiency adoption, driving new standards and policies, which will help us also innovate quicker and quickly um, from the technology, the behavior uh, perspective as well. Um, I, I think with a lot of the carbon policies or climate change questions that are out there, this will give us a, a stronger connection to that piece as well. And then the obvious piece is just with the utilities and the shift of the business model and then identifying um, opportunities with uh, micro grids, uh, electric vehicles, uh, some community um, renewable efforts, storage, and uh, what we have in uh, Washington State, we've got pot as well. So um, with that, that's, uh, um, that's the Kellett's PUD perspective. All right. Thanks very much, David. I, um, we're going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, get into our question and answer period. And um, we've had a number of questions come in, and I'm going to uh, tee them up for our speakers. Um, I guess, uh, uh, first off, uh, for any of the three of you, I think we covered some of this, but uh, if you could uh, probe it a little bit further, how can I use uh, benchmarking to help my programs or, or uh, my, uh, my organization in how it views energy efficiency programs? Well, I, I'll take a stab at that. Um, the good question and a rich question that uh, there, there's a number of ways you can uh, leverage the benchmarking. Um, one would just be to uh, be able to kind of see how your your costs are performing compared to another uh, peer group. Um, another would be to see how your savings is performing. And then, of course, you know, the, the ratio of those two things, looking at your cost of saved energy. Um, but if when, once you're able to break things down, you know, another layer in terms of by breaking them down by consistent cost categories, you're, you're then able to tease out what, um, what elements within a program or in a specific program type might be, might be uh, either driving up costs or driving down costs. And that can provide some insight both in terms of kind of uh, opportunities for operational improvement or it may even provide opportunities and insights into kind of just the market dynamics. Um, so you have some insight in terms of kind of what's going on within uh, that market transformation landscape and where the market is. Um, so by having that, uh, those peer groups to be able to benchmark and compare across, that allows, that gives you that further insight and it's, it's really helpful to have that, um, that can, a consistent cost categorization scheme to um, to provide that deeper insight, as well as the program categorization scheme to be able to ensure that you're really trying to compare apples to apples that really is um, as best as you can. David, do you want to add anything? I'll, I'll add another uh, uh, aspect of that as well, and that is on the quality, qualitative side. Um, uh, Alex did allude to some pieces of that that for smaller utilities or utilities that are just coming up to speed with regards to DSM or efficiency programs, this will also, the benchmarking piece will also give you, or the tool uh, will also give you an opportunity to look to others, ask those questions and get the how, how did you do it? 
um, as well as the why question. Why are you doing this program this way? Um, I, I think that's a, it's a major benefit in addition to a lot of the data that will get collected. Um, that can add value uh, significantly and get utilities up to speed or up to that place where it is needed um, within your communities. Thanks uh, very much. I, and now I think that this is a, a, a question for you, Alex. Um, you know, when uh, if, if folks pass their data to you, um, what is the process for uh, integrating it into your uh, benchmarking uh, system, and and how do you expect to be able to display that data over time? Are, are, will it be broken down by by region, by state, by programs, or how, how do you how do you think you might present it? Well, I, part of the effort here is the. It's a very broad question, so I'll try not to talk for the rest of the webinar. Uh, part of the answer here is, is just we really want to get a handle on the data. So you know, with this reporting tool, we think it helps us wrap our arms around certain pieces of it. It helps us create a slightly more standardized community of reporting, assuming people agree with the definitions. If they don't, you know, it allows us to have really good discussions about that, but along the way, we work out a lot of our definitional issues. We look, work out a lot of our research gaps. And, and you know, hopefully our partners and our utilities are all working together on this. And our vision is that at some point we're able to roll out a kind of, a, I, I don't know if it's a, a, prid, a quid pro quo, quo arrangement, but we end up with a tool that lets you put in a little bit of your data and then compare yourself with everyone else. We already are taking, you know, it's not up to date at this point, but we're, we're already taking and effectively slicing and dicing and chopping. And, th and this is the work of uh, some really smart people at, at Austin Energy, at Orlando Utilities, at OPPD, you know, um, who got together and put together this benchmarking tool. Um, and it, it will let you compare yourself to publicly available data. Now, there's a lot of other questions that we know we need to be asking ourselves, and so I think the vision is to allow people to give some of that data and then get it in return in aggregate form. There, of course, still need to be, a lot of things need to be worked out before that can happen, but ultimately we think that's the way to help utilities who may not even have staff who may be asked by their city council and who, uh, to look into energy efficiency programs and, and who may you know, really benefit from getting all the way into uh, the costs of a metric, sorry, the costs of a program and other things that once you get a handle on the data, you can start to tease out like participation versus cost effectiveness trade-offs these kind of really neat things you might do from a public policy perspective that only can be done if you have really good baseline data and people are kind of participating and giving you their data and it's being crunched uh, and the research is being done. So, so hopefully I've laid out a little bit of the long run vision there and, and what we think might be able to happen uh, in the public power community and, and maybe it might inform other communities as well. Yeah, no, I think you, you you handled it well. Let's see. I, I guess um, does anyone uh, want to chime in, uh, David, on what format uh, the presentation of the data might uh, might take that would be most useful to public power entities for their own benchmarking purposes? Uh, so, format of the data or platform? Well, spreadsheets tend to be universal. <laughs> Um, I, that would be the pathway. I mean, that's what the tools. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear with the question. I, if uh, for the uh, display of the data, the presentation of the data to consumers of it at public power entities, what oh. kinds of, of uh, you know, geographic resolution and subject matter resolution do you think would be most helpful? Um. There's a, there's a lot of data and information. You know, some of the key elements would be whether or not it's cost effective. So 
if you're talking to rate payers, as is as it is in most cases with uh, public power, uh, you want to make sure that uh, customers uh, see the picture uh, as it relates to being cost effective uh, for that utility. Um, I think that would be one of the the bigger ones, and uh, you know, from a uh, a regulatory perspective, there may be another level of that that may be needed in terms of uh, the full costs of program implementation. I don't know if I'm answering that question. It seems relatively. No, I think wrong. you're doing. That you, you've got it. I, I just a couple others here uh, that are all kind of around the same issue and. The gist of it is that uh, many utilities already are reporting this information or some subset of this information to their utility board or to their commission, uh, their council, uh, or a committee of their council. So, uh, so why would they go ahead and, and do this again through APPA? There's a, you know, a sense of maybe there's duplication uh, here or redundancy. It's uh, and, um, you know, is there is there a way of um, maybe reporting this in tandem with any of the EIA 861 reporting. Uh, does anyone want to take that on? I can probably answer to that best. Um, plus, Alex, you've got, some, you've got some insights there, but I'll go ahead and start. Um, there's going to be a redundancy in any reporting that we do. Um, I mean, I think we should take advantage of that. This is, you know, if this becomes a national tool specific to public power, there's an opportunity there. Um, what I'm doing, or at least what we're doing here at Calix PUD, is we're going to try to make that piece easier, and that's developing that infrastructure, the database piece, that will allow us to make reporting easier. Um, we'll be able to slice and dice through our specific data and then you know, map that specific criteria for all of our reports, for the state, for the region, uh, Bonneville Power Administration specifically, um, uh, uh, the EIA stuff, um, DOE-related EIA, um, and this tool as well. This is, for me, it's uh, it makes the world a better place and uh, allows us to collaborate at a national level. So, um, I, I like I like the direction this is going. I'll just add that you know no one wants to to duplicate any reporting. Uh, what we are trying to do is take publicly available data and slice and dice that for you, but there are things that are not public, and there are different ways that different communities report their efficiency data. So having the discussion about what is it exactly that we're reporting, how do we define this, how do we make it easy for people to punch in a couple of numbers, also see their publicly available data without having to re-report it, uh, is a really good way to do things. Uh, that's absolutely the direction that we want to head. Uh, but you know, program administrative costs, you might report that to the P your PUC, but then again, you might not. If, if you have them, that's great. If you don't, we also need to do some educating as a community. We need to find ways to bring people into the fold, and, and this is one good opportunity to do that. So you know, I hope even though there may be some duplicate reporting at different levels, whether it's to your board or, or to, to a PUC if you happen to report to one, um, the national discussion is an important aspect of that. Thanks. Um, I, I think we've um, had a number of questions come in from some folks who you know, see there are some gaps here in the reporting tool. Uh, they'd like to see uh, some reporting on capacity, uh, maybe uh, some ability to uh, elaborate a little more on details of cost categorization, um, and uh, maybe uh, be able to uh, get into issues of uh, baselines, how baselines are defined. Um, I think it's fair to say that we see, uh, collectively see these all as very important issues uh, that but, uh, we, we did want to err on the side of simplicity for this first version of this tool. It doesn't mean it's the end of the conversation, uh, that there uh, could be some subsequent versions, I think adding, you know, reporting on megawatts, uh, 
of capacity uh, avoided uh, would be a relatively simple addition, and, and we'd be looking for opportunities to, to make very simple additions like that. Um, but I'm going to throw it open to um, to, to David to, to our presenters and see if they, uh, you know, have any anything further to say on that front. This, this Alex, just adding that, yeah, absolutely. We we want to have that discussion. We're we're reaching out um, at this point. We've done our best to make a, a simplified tool one that we think can spread ac across this, this massive differential that we have between a city like LA and uh, East Cupcake, Nebraska. So wh what we want to do is find ways to, to include very relevant information and, and tease out what is essential. And, and I think the capacity idea is a really good one. And, so if you have those kinds of ideas, um, and we've already received uh, one or two, please reach out. We want, we want your voice to be a part of the discussion. So uh, my perspective is, right, right keep it simple. <laughs> the KISS principle, um, the tool isn't going to meet everybody's needs right up front. That's, that's the reality. Um, that's my perspective. Um, as more and more people can identify uh, the key fields or criteria that they want to be a part of the tool or will be consistent in terms of reporting or that ease of reporting, um, that's, what make, that's what will make it better and that's what will allow it to grow. So I think with those uh, additional pieces that may come into play um, that could be part of the tool or um, more easily reported within the tool, then, yeah, I, I think it'll it'll eventually happen. It's just uh, you want to keep it simple at first. That's that's my perspective. Okay, I um, I think we're near the end of the questions that we have. Uh, we do have uh, one request that uh, we uh, take a poll or a survey uh, to determine whether it's a simple tool is preferable to a more complicated one that uh, would serve as the primary reporting instrument uh, and, and perhaps uh, eliminate or reduce uh, report uh, duplication. Um, and I, I think we uh, might, uh, we in APPA uh, will discuss that as a potential follow-on and, and be in touch with the attendees uh, on that at, at a later time. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say that this is the beginning of, of a conversation and um, we're anxious to have it uh, with uh, members of APPA along uh, with the association itself. Um, is there anything further any of the presenters would like to add? Okay, with that, I'm going to thank all, all the attendees for joining us. And you see our contact information up there. If you have some input here, some feedback on the tool, uh, or would like to uh, participate in a, a conversation about its ultimate form uh, or uh, begin sharing your data, we will, uh, we'll, we're happy to take those inquiries and, and uh, we'll, uh, happy to kind of get on the phone with you if there's some other folks at your, um, at your uh, organization that would like to discuss this. We're, um, we're happy to kind of give them uh, some, uh, a quick run through of the tool as well. So, uh, with that, I think we'll end our webinar with our thanks. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank, Thank you. you.